pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll open the meeting with a moment of silence. This meeting's being recorded and televised by the local cable company. I'd like a motion to approve bill and payroll warrants. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to accept correspondence in the read file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public forum. Now's the time for anyone to speak if they want to speak on something that's not on the agenda. Okay. Approval of meeting minutes, open session February 19th, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Dispense with the chairman's report this evening. Go right to the town administrator's report. Frank. Um, as you know, we had the uh, Dr. Tarsi from Bridgewater University here last Wednesday who presented the results of the town survey that was conducted in uh, late fall, early winter. Uh, I am still waiting for the additional report data, uh, and once I have that, I'll be posting it on the web for general review and I, I just have to say that it was a significant task and we appreciate the work she did on it. Okay. Anything else? Um, I have some budget issues when I'm meeting with the finance committee when we're done here. Okay. It might be, we don't, we haven't set the schedule for, um, for April yet, but it might be a good idea to get that in our, our minds now. Um, I think it would be it'd be wise to have a meeting next week, April 2nd. Uh, as I understand it, you're, work, you're working on a version of the budget yourself that's somewhat different from yes. either of the two scenarios that we discussed last week with the Finance Committee. Correct. Um, what, what should happen next week is between now and next week, you'll we'll give us a report of that I mean, in writing I mean, and then we'll be able to discuss it as a board at next week's meeting be the primary sense of business next week yes so that we can give um, uh, direction to the finance committee and the department heads and you'll probably be meeting with the department heads this week to discuss what you're going through too okay. short of that though um, without our having the full discussion on, on what you are coming up with um, it, I don't know if it makes sense to, to the rest of you, but it would make sense to me if we could give the Finance Committee um, uh, a little direction for, for this evening, the meeting with the schools this evening. Their two scenarios last week dealt with um, uh, one that gave the uh, schools a 10% increase and the other one that did, did, did not, that gave it a less of an increase. But if those two scenarios, one of them would be devastating to every other department in the, in the town, the one with the 10% increase. The other column uh, would still present um, cuts in departments, in, in, in the cuts in the amount of money that goes to departments, some of which would have to mean personnel. Um, and all of that would, uh, it rests on an, an override to overcome it. Um, but it's my, it's my sense that with the, with the schools asking for 15%, are the finance committee's seeming willingness to give them 10% um, and are seeing the effect that that would have of those two scenarios on the rest of the departments in town, then maybe we want to, if, if, if someone wants to make a motion, that might be a good idea for, it might be good for Frank to be able to go to the finance committee tonight and say that as far as we're concerned, the 10% option is really not on the board. Would any anyone want to make make that um, make that motion? I'll make that motion for discussion. Second. Is there a second? Second. So my question is, <clears throat> anything less than <clears throat> what I would like to see is whatever we can come up with with the budget. 
that somewhat keeps the town as harmless as possible because in fact it, uh, it, it seems like we're controlling, I'm looking at the budgets, we're, we've done some pretty good controlling and, and some ideas about holding down the, the raises and stuff. And I'd like to see that maintained. So less than 10% for the schools, I'm on, on board with that. I mean, they need, to, they need to look at their budget and come up with something that helped both communities. Well, yeah, you know, I think it's realistic to... Here's, here's, here's what's real. Um, is for the information we had last week, um, Hanson is, is willing to, to uh, give the schools a pro somewhere between 5 and 6%. Um, if you were to take the first, if we were to take the first column that, uh, on the, the finance committee's recommendations, um, that would amount to about a five percent increase or so to the schools, perhaps. Is that is that correct? Six and a half. Six and a half percent, and then there's the ten percent. Uh, they asked for fifteen. They're not going to be happy with ten. They're obviously going to be less happy with six. They're going to be less happy with five. However, it's more realistic to say that this point in the game, we need to think about not just the schools, but the other departments too. Absolutely. And um, I, 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 think that, I think I'd like us to send a signal that the 10 percent is, is not something to be uh, considered at this time. Well, Anyone else? I yeah. agree. I mean, I, 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 what I don't want to do, what I don't want to do is to split the town up between the schools and the rest of the town. And if that's what it seems like I'm doing, I'm not. Uh, we're going to need an override. Uh, Frank has been working uh, on cutting the, the, that override from the level that we were talking about last week to a lower level. Uh, if uh, the, um, the, the debt exclusion goes, then that gives us some more money to deal with. What we're trying to do is to, is to keep everybody as, as harmless as possible. Everyone, everyone as harmless as possible. I don't want to see a scenario where people are, are thinking of an override as just for the schools. It's an override from the town. But I think it's still realistic for us to suggest to the Finance Committee that a 10 percent increase is, uh, is, uh, is unwise at this time. <clears throat> Frank, Hanson committed six and a half. Well, they, they haven't committed yet, but the town administrator and his accountant met with me last week and said they could probably do six and a half. Without an override. I'm hearing with an override. Well, again. Well, the thing is, that's going to set it. That, that, that sets that into was, play. That was yeah. just the town administrator and the accountant saying, "Yeah, we think we can do this." That's um, and that was that was the sorry. amount of support that had. Yeah, yeah, that sets into play a whole. Other, that's a whole other scenario. Um, once we uh, both the towns come up with a, a percentage for the schools that's less than what they, they think they need, um, they come back to us another with another budget. If and then we go through that whole thing and see what. Well, what we can do with that, what they can do with it, uh, and then the possibility down the road is of a two-town meeting. But with 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 Hanson uh, believing what they believe right now, and with our looking at what we're looking at right now, it, that's going to be it's going to be an interesting meeting. So six and a half is about it. Eight eighty on us. Yeah. Uh, six and a half. <clears throat> He gave us that number. Six and a half is eight sixty-two, five sixty-two to Whitman, <coughs> and five seventy-nine, three ninety, three sixty-seven to Hanson. Yeah. I, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm asking us to commit to that first scenario. That six and a half. I think. I think Frank has been doing some work, and we, we might get to uh, might get to a different stage. We're just saying less than ten. Just saying less than 10. Just let them know that the, the 10, isn't, 10 isn't going to work yet. And that we, uh, and I'd like to have our board have a full discussion of the budget next week based upon um, what, what uh, Frank has done this past week and he'll be doing in the, in the week to come. And you'll be sharing some of those ideas with them tonight probably with the, with yes. the Finance Committee. So it's premature for us to say, you know, at percentage, but it's, it's not, I don't think, it, my feeling is it wouldn't be premature to say. Um, let's put a, let's put a stop to the 10% idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Frank, you're saying around six percent, six percent, six and a half is around eight hundred and fifty thousand for us increase. Nine under nine hundred. Yes. Eight sixty-two, five sixty-two. Yeah. Eight sixty-two, five sixty-two. Yeah. Eight sixty-two. Again, it's premature to be thinking that specifically. I think. I know that, but I have okay. 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 I just. You know, there was a there was a logic to, to what the finance committee did. There was a logic to, to taking what they thought was a three point three million dollar <coughs> deficit and divide all the departments up. But as Frank has explained, there are some things that you can't cut, so it didn't work out exactly right. So there's a logic to that. The other scenario is to have us all, you know, put on our uh, Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland hats and start lopping things off. And we don't we don't want to do that willy-nilly either. I think what we want is a serious discussion based upon some serious work that, that the town administrator has done over the last uh, last period of time. But at least give the finance committee the idea right now that 10% uh, right. isn't going to work for anybody. And the schools don't think it's going to work for them, probably. And, and you know how hard, how, how hard it is for me to say that uh, because of my history with the schools. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Pitt Budget Review, Plymouth County Mosquito Control. Uh, we're one of many communities. I got that one, too. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really is a, a small number compared to what we're dealing with right now. And then additionally, um, we don't get to set the budget. It comes off our cherry sheet. <laughs> but unless you have a They've really taken the money enough, strong yeah. feeling about um, going after this budget, Whitman uh, is being assessed 29339 for mosquito control. These are all the towns in Plymouth County. Uh, for perspective, Abington is 39, East Bridgewater is 34, um, what's near us? West Bridgewater, which kind of a little bit bigger in land, but certainly not a bigger town. Well, everybody's bigger in land. It's 38. Well, mostly swamp, is that what you're 38,000. 29 not bad. Yeah. Um, I, I just, it's perfunctory. Unless we act, it's approved. But they do uh, recommend that it be brought to the selectmen for review. We need a, we need a motion to accept the assessment. You could do that, yes. And then I can notify them. That All right. that. Is there a motion? I don't like mosquitoes. I'll make the motion. Second. Is there a second? Is there second. any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Liaison reports. Uh, Dan has one from the whole colony planning. Council. Nope, nope, MBTA. Nope. MBTA, sorry. Yeah, um, today I was in Boston for the MBTA advisory board, and good news uh, Whitman's assessment this year is going to go from 74166 down to 49908 or savings, a decrease <coughs> of almost 33% or 24005 $258. I am really afraid to ask why. Uh, <laughs> why? It, it's, ba it's, ba it's based on um, the makeup of our town. That's what they're saying. It's a new thing. Plus, uh, the MBTA is going with a 2.78% budget <clears throat> increase. Well, remember, we're also part of Brockton Area Transit. Right, and the fact that, right. And BATS budget Might increase. assessment right. to Whitman comes out of that. Money. Right. So, so it may be that bad increase, too. Maybe bad increase, so we took it off. But hey, at least it, the number went down. Unfortunately, Hanson's went up. Okay. Anyways, you get a full report in the read file, Frank. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, nothing under policies or procedures. Um, we did have the Selectman Handbook. That's, yeah, that's under all business. Oh, okay. We can do we can take it out of order if you'd like. Uh, order Selectman's Handbook. We have it in our package. We have gone over it with, with suggested changes in it. 
We just got it in the package tonight to, to relook at. Maybe this would be a, Can we bring it back be a good thing week? to bring it back next week. So we have a meeting scheduled for next week. We need to set up the next meeting, the meeting after that. Do you, anyone have any thoughts, any suggestions? The further out you go, I may not make up back then. Won't make next week. That's right, because you're... Yeah, so, um, I mean, if you... If you feel as though you have to meet earlier, but the 23rd would maybe best. be better for you. Yeah. 23rd will actually be better for me because I'm not here on the 16th. <coughs> Works. You 23rd are, is that vacation week? No. So, yeah. so the second, the 23rd. Okay. I will provide as much input on the budget as I can by the second. Excellent. Okay, new business. Public hearing with respect to the petition of Mass Electric Company in Verizon, New England, requesting permission for National Grid to install new stub pole 284 and anchor for pole 2 in place of existing push brace 289 and to install underground facilities on, on Angelina Drive. So moved. Second. Okay. Anyone here to speak on this? Yes. I just read something that I don't understand at all, but so you can help me. Yes, go ahead. Sure. That's what I'm here for. Uh, Tim Lyford, National Good Electric, 100 East Ashland Street, Brockton. So, yes, as uh, previously stated, National Grid is petitioning to install one new pole and one new anchor. Uh, this new pole and anchor is going to replace an existing push brace at pole two on Angelina Drive. The push brace is actually the pole that's um, at an angle against that existing okay. pole. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess um, residents would like that removed, so we're going to replace that with a pole across the street uh, with a support attached to it. <clears throat> Anyone have any questions? By support, I assume you mean the anchored wire that forms an A on the pipe? Correct, yep. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Public meeting with respect to the application of 746 auto sales. Nicholas Loring for a class two auto dealer's license on the premises located at 746 Bedford Street, subject to proof of workers' compensation insurance, receipt of the license fee, and a final inspection approval of the building commissioner slash zoning enforcement officer. So moved. Second. There's a second. How are you doing? Good. Good. Anyone have any questions? This is just a transfer from your dad to you. Correct. Yep. Okay. No further questions. Has it been moved and seconded? Yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Right. It's been around a long time. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. Take action to renew the tax to renew the taxi livery license and taxi livery driver certificate. Eric Young doing business business as Sleepner Transportation, 8 Tanika Drive for the period April 1st, 2019 through March 31st, 2020, <clears throat> subject to payment of the license fees and the submittal of required renewal documents. Yes, so moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You're doing it. Act on the request of Christine Morse for permission to use the Town Hall Auditorium on Saturday, October 5th, 2019 in order to hold a beauty pageant to benefit the Miss Whitman Scholarship Organization. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Question. This here? came out of basically out of nowhere. I got an email asking about the possibility of using the town hall. I did communicate with uh, Miss Morris. Uh, we talked about the uh, potential of perhaps having it at the high school where there's a performing arts center and other things. But uh, she seemed to think that uh, it may be difficult to get there, and I think she's kind of looking at this as an alternative to that. We, I don't, to my knowledge, we've never done anything like this, and typically, the hall has been um, used by uh, groups that are tied either to the town or the school. This is a kind of an independent venture in my mind. She is offering to involve dollars for scholars and uh, some of the revenue that this may generate, although I'm really unclear how it generates revenue because it's not a pay per 
mm -hmm. uh, entry performance. It's kind of a talent show. And she's providing um, the sound and lights and all that? Um, well, we have a sound system and we have stage lights. Okay. The She would have to be responsible for insurance. the cost of having uh, our maintenance person here mm -hmm. uh, before and after and for the duration of the event would also, if the board is uh, interested in approving this, would have to provide us with an insurance uh, endorsement. I mean, there's certainly exposure when you uh, do these types of events. Uh, I frankly have never been involved in one, so I don't know what to expect. Anybody else have any response questions? And just for a point of information, we cannot rent out uh, either the town hall or the police facilities uh, because we have borrowed money on a tax-free basis to either build or support them, and any outside operation that generates revenue causes those bonds to be reclassified as non-taxable, um, which would put us in a really tough situation. If we were to say to someone, sure, you can use it, but you have to rent it. Right. So she does, does this would be rent-free, except for paying for the... Um, except for paying for actual yeah. costs. Frank, what about a security issue as far as police and fire? ambulance in case somebody gets hurt. Well, I would expect that she would have a detail on site. Well, we may want to make that as part of the... So if those, <coughs> if the board is willing to entertain this, then I think those things need to happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, does someone just want to make, have we made a motion on this? Yes. We have, okay. A second. And with the, uh, given the advice to check with police, yeah. Police and fire to make sure that, you know, and safety issues. Okay. All, all those in favor? All right. All right. We act on the request of town clerk Don Varley to reappoint Alice Redell to the position of Registrar of, voter, Registrar of Voters for a three-year term beginning on April 1st, 2019 and expiring on March 31st, 2022. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Authorized access for Drake Petroleum Monitoring Wells. Frank? The uh, engineer for Drake Petroleum, who is the former owner of the property in question, uh, has uh, sought permission to place monitoring wells to detect any migration of contaminants that may be in the uh, land as a result of the the uh, closing of that gas station that was on that location. This is a typical request mm -hmm. because the state requires that they provide uh, ongoing uh, monitoring once a site has been contaminated and they've begun the cleanup. Okay. Any, anybody have anything to say? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing to discuss the status of Class Two auto dealers license held by Ally Motors, Incorporated and the premises located at 934 Temple Street based on the results of the site inspection performed by the Building Commissioner Zoning Enforcement Office. I will say that uh, Building Commissioner Bob Curran and I both visited that site last week, and and Bob has some recommendations that he'd like to share with the board. Okay, you're on, Bob. Um, just wanted to update the board. Um, in December, I sent we sent out notices to all Class Two auto dealers in the town, and I've been performing inspections every week as many as I can fit in. Um, two of them are here tonight, on per my request. Um, inspections were done and, and discrepancies were noted and notices were sent. Um, notices were actually sent to them before we did the inspections. And then once I did the inspections, any discrepancies were recorded and then I 
um, had informed them we were going to have a hearing in front of the Board of Selectmen regarding their Class II auto dealer's license. The first one, Alley Motors, um, there's been a problem with this location for quite a while. It goes back to 2010, although they were different proprietors. Um, this time, the concerns were there were far too many vehicles on the site. The vehicles weren't parked in the layouts that were approved by the Board of Selectmen for the Class II, and they were displayed in um, previous not notices were regarding these violations were um, unheard and no changes were made. Um, since then, I've met with the manager for this property, and they've made some changes. In fact, I have some pictures for the selectmen if you'd like to see them, but um, they moved the cars back approximately 80, uh, eight feet. They put a kind of a plant, a mulch area there, and they put some uh, planting buckets or barrels there per my request. And the um, only issue I have now is that there are too many vehicles on display. There's 85, um, they're licensed for 60. The license said what? I'm sorry. For 60. They're 60. licensed for 60 vehicles, and I believe there's 85 on site right now. The owner um, has presented me with a, a proposed plan that would should be presented to this board um, for approval to to increase the number of vehicles, but I think that's up to you. What's your recommendation? My recommendation is if they um, adhere to what we've discussed as far as the front goes. These mm -hmm. cars were parked so close to the street a, a, a pedestrian couldn't walk by without mm -hmm. being on the pavement of the roadway and it's been a constant cause of complaints to my office. Okay. If they keep these things, these vehicles back, I won't have an issue. You um, won't have an issue with 85? I won't have an issue with 100 there. Oh. Um, they have said that they would make some changes to um, the surface. Mm -hmm. They would make some changes to the surface area and they would park them according to a new plan that was presented in my okay. office last week. Okay, thanks. Do you, do you, would you like to say something? President Potter, I'd like a chance to speak with Sure. Um, did anyone here have any questions first before we listen to him? I do. Okay, <clears throat> how I see it, Bob, he has a license for 60. He foregoed that license or what in the plot plan that we authorized him and went with 100 vehicles encroaching on Route 18 and I'm hearing encroaching on private property in the back. Now we want to, he says, well, he'd like 80, there's 85 there now. You think 100 can go there. I think before we even consider even 85, he needs to adhere to his license and maintain 60 vehicles like he's supposed to like he said he would, so we can trust him to maintain that before I would even consider increasing the amount of vehicles. And, and I do not disagree. I just, what, what I did is I worked closely with the manager and we, um, we went through a new plan that I wouldn't be objectionable to, but it's up to this board. The only reason he's doing this is because he got caught. It, I agree. And I would not, I want him to see if he can abide for a length of time what his license requires of 60 vehicles. We've got two, two places here we're going to deal with. And that's my feeling on both. They need, to, uh, they need to look at their plot plan that they agreed to and presented and follow through with it, maintain it for a period of time before I would even consider increasing it on your recommendation. Okay. That's my feeling. Okay, thank you, Dan. Would you like to say something? Yeah, please. <clears throat> Good evening. And you are? I'm Craig Donahue of 344 Sportsman's Trail. Thank you. And I'm also here on behalf of my 95-year-old neighbor who um, can't be here this evening because he broke his hip. Um, some years ago, I bought a buff a lot behind that um, abuts the alley motors. And my uh, neighbor lives at 34 Albert Street, which also abuts. Um, I'd like to say I have no ax to grind with alley. I mean, they've been fairly good neighbors, but over a period of time, they've been parking more and more vehicles in that field behind their business. Um, they're back right up into the, up to the edge of the woods, um, and they're onto Mr. Shepard's property, and it, it really looks like a junkyard out there. They have way too many vehicles. Um, if you were to go out just to look at it, they're supposed to have 60. They have, well, they, I guess 85, said, said Bob, um, but there's, there's always way too many cars out back there. I've also, we've also noticed that uh, last summer, 
someone started making improvements to that field. They brought in a bobcat and they started um, leveling that lot. And then they brought in a dump truck and they started spreading some kind of a substrate. When, as they were doing that, um, they were driving around the field with the, with the dump up. They contacted the high tension wires. They arced it all over the place. They put out the, the power to all the sportsman's trail and the fire department and the, um, the Edison had to respond. We had no power for some hours. So we're not sure if they've been permitted to do these improvements. And uh, we don't think they've, you know, they've been permitted to have that many vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've also noted that the business has built a type of makeshift wooden garage behind the business and they're servicing cars out of it. We wonder if the structure is, the structure is permitted, if it's been inspected, and if they're coded to do repairs out of it. So Mr. Shepard and I see nothing but problems for us and our neighbors if Allie's allowed to store and work on 100 vehicles in this converted field. It's just not big enough. In fact, they, you know, it's, uh, we don't agree that it should have the 60 vehicles that you've allowed now. We'd ask the town to enforce the 60 that you've, um, you know, that you've imposed on them, and we'd ask that you consider reducing it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, uh, do you know, can you shed any light on the, uh, the improvements that were being made, uh, whether they were permitted or not? Um, the, the number of vehicles, the vehicles parked in the back in that field. Um, what I'm talking about now is the last thing that... The building on the site? The, the, yeah, yeah. So I would have to look into the, there's a structure there that looks like an accessory structure. It's probably around 200 square feet. Yeah. Um, I would have to look to see if that's permitted. It's been there as long as I can remember. However, I haven't looked at the inside of that. I will take a look at it. What about it, the dump truck work in there? The dump truck work was sound to me like somebody was spreading down some stone pack mm -hmm. to make the parking area appropriate for the vehicles that are parked out there. Um, while I was there today, I did make some um, observations of the Pomelo's garage in the b behind that, and there's a lot of junk stored over in that area. And the owner who owns the whole piece of property is I'm in the process of writing a, an order for him to clean that all up. This property's been a problem for a long time. Okay. I have a question for Bob. Yep. Bob, have you gone to the Board of Assessors to find out exactly where the, the private land ends or begins? ally where they've been putting stone if they've been adding stone to private property that's an issue i have a copy of the plot plan in the file um, i will review that and i could even request that we get a land surveyor to mark the rear property line i didn't know there was any issues with the um, I mean, with the neighbors behind them but um, i can certainly address that i mean that is I don't even want to get there. I don't right, know. right now, the plan that you that, that that they have been approved with doesn't show them parking any vehicles in the back right. field. So if you just decide to keep it with 60 for for now, then th we can do some investigation to see if that's appropriate right. that they park out the back. So you're um, you're, you're basically uh, I'm saying you're making a motion. making a motion that we maintain the original plot plan of 60 vehicles until we are comfortable that he will not encroach on other people's property. He can maintain more vehicles, and there's an, I'd like the fire department to be able to look at it to make sure they can get apparatus back there in case there's a fire, because that, you know, and, and take um, care of it, so. While I was there this morning, I did observe there was about six vehicles parked that we don't know, that Alley Motors has no control of, um, and now I will seek the owner to remove those. Good. So I'm making a motion that okay. we maintain the 60 vehicles according to the plot plan, which was authorized by the Board of Selectmen on his license. That's Do you um, want to put in a timeline for compliance with that? I mean, um, 14 days? Four, two weeks to get rid of 40 vehicles. That's fine. Whatever Thank you. Would you like to say something, please? Um, <clears throat> my name is Alex. I'm the owner of the Ally Motors. I do apologize for everything that going on there, but uh, uh, we have the we, we had the lot for 60 cars and we keep 60 cars on our lot. The question is like we rent from our landlord the back lot that he rented for us and we pay extra rent for that and we never have any problems with the neighbors. So the neighbors never come to us. I talked to the landlord, I signed the lease, he told me that I can use this back lot for my business. And uh, 
I do apologize that we have a uh, kind of uh, inconvenience with your neighbors, but if they come to us, we will definitely work something out and we will move all the cars of the property. The property that we rent, we use it. If it's not, if we use it somebody else's property, we need to talk to the landlord and make exact line where is, where is, where is our property, where is not. So we have no problem to cooperate with the neighbor and make the line. Uh, we try to increase the business, and we, we, like, we have a few people who work there, we try to increase the business, so we try to not keep at the same level that we start. Uh, so we try to grow the business, we try to increase the amount of cars, and we try to make it legal. We rent the back spot, uh, we put the asphalt on it, it we don't really have a, enough money to put like an actual asphalt, so we put the uh, crushed asphalt. That, Right Legal. now, though, you're in, in violation of the license that you have because the restriction was 60, and what you're looking for is to increase that. I think what the gentleman on my left is saying is he'd like to see some sort of um, some sort of assurance that you're going to and we have no be problem. as good a neighbor as you're, as you're, as you're, um, yeah. you're suggesting you're going to be. Yeah. And we have no problem. So if that. we can if we can get I think if we can get rid of those those extra 25 cars 25 right cars. now work for a while with that and then come back um, at a later date after working with the uh, with the building inspector and zoning officer and talking to the neighbors um, with it with an amendment to that plan mm -hmm. that might work out does that make sense and to you we, we will be happy to do so yeah and we're gonna clean the back lot Question. because it's a <clears throat> four businesses at the one property so the cars on the back it's not nothing mm -hmm. to do with ours so we will I'll talk to the landlord and we clean this place up yeah. Uh, even if it's not ours, you're still you're still willing to do that. Yes. I have a question. Yes. If, um, if you talk to if you talk to the people who own the land behind you, and you've already put crushed stone on their property, and they say no, I don't want the cars on my property. It's not. Are you going to remove that? It's not their property. We don't know that, Dan. We don't. It, it's mm -hmm. his his landlord is leasing property to him, and that's what he put the crushed stone. On. Mr. Chairman. So it's the property owner. It's the landlord that has to make that person whole. Yes. So that's why we, we, we will talk to the landlord about that. So now we just try to increase the amount of cars right. used the back lot. We still have the 60 cars on our lot, and we have the extra lot on the back that we try to increase. So uh, we'll go back to the 60, we clean everything up, we'll keep okay. keep keep the right way. And, and work with the building inspector and the neighbors. Okay. If I just may add, Frank. just for your concern, before we laid the crushed stone, we, we engaged Mr. Avery, who is a local surveyor, right. who went out and did a survey of it. And we and he was there. We have his plan, and so we went to where he suggested mm -hmm. our landline was, sir. So we okay. we did we we did not haphazardly just lay crushed stone there. We did engage Mr. Avery, who's been involved with the property for many years, and we laid the crushed stone in accordance with the plan that he had gave us before. In terms of the dump truck, I just want to address that. Um, we engaged a third-party company to come over and 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 dump it. Um, the gentleman. Um, inadvertently hit the line. We immediately called the local fire department. We immediately uh, called NSTAR and got the situation rectified as quickly as we could. Uh, it certainly wasn't something that anybody planned to do. He, he made a mistake and he did it. In terms of the house that's outside and addressing the neighbor's concerns, we do not do service work at the lot. Um, all our service work is done by outside mechanics. We do details at the shop. So we do uh, we clean our cars there. We're not doing any service work related there. We don't do any oil changes, anything of that nature. All that's done by outside third-party mechanics. So we are not doing any work there. We may do minor work, changing a bulb or something of that nature, but we don't do brake jobs or any or any major service work there at that location. It's simply details. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Frank, did you want to say something? I just, uh, when I was out there with Bob, I think what we talked about was having a surveyor actually mark the land mm -hmm. so they know exactly where those mm -hmm. points are. Okay. Okay, we ready to vote? Okay, all so those we're, we're voting on 60, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? 60 cars in 14 Aye. days. 14 yeah. days. 14 days. Maintain. And then come back later once you've shown that you're yeah. Yeah. being Thank good. You. Okay. Is it, do we vote yet? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Hearing to discuss the status of the Class II auto dealer's license held by WR Cars, Inc., on the premises located at 991 Bedford Street, 
based on the results of a site inspection performed by the building can commissioner zoning enforcement officer. Bob. Um, this one's a little bit different. This was um, used to be Jack and Jill Daycare Center. It's Scott Kelly owns the building, and they, the the um, applicants went to the Board of Appeals for permission to um, have that as a car dealer. And part of the stipulation was that they couldn't use the house as a as a residence, which I don't believe they are. Mm -hmm. But the original plan that was approved by the Board of Appeals before it came to the Board of Selectmen is critical to me because I'm the zoning officer. Mm -hmm. um, the original plan was had an island out front that was supposed to be um, restored and new plantings put in it. Well, the new the um, proprietor has taken out that island and moved the cars up forward to the street, and they were actually displaying further north from where they were allowed to display. I went by there today. They had the appropriate amount of vehicles. However, the island in the front has not been restored, and I would like, at least as a result of this hearing, is a warning to them that if they're not in compliance with the approved plan, then their license is in jeopardy and that you would ask them to restore the island and some plantings in front of the building. Why wouldn't you just tell them to restore the island and find them daily until it gets restored? And, and I certainly... Enforcement office. Right, and, and I certainly could... That, this is one why I brought it up that way differently is because I can do that under the zoning enforcement officer title, but the inspections that I did on this round were for class two auto dealers license, which is issued by the board of selectmen. So there's a double jeopardy here for we them. We can get them both ways. We can get them both ways. Okay. Now it's fifty dollars a day. Um, again, my recommendation is we don't want to put anybody out of business, but we want them to be in compliance with what was what has been pr approved. Do you have something you'd like to say? Uh, um. Yeah, we we have a you know a little bit more cars we should have, but uh, we already got rid of it. We only have the 20 cars there now. Um, the island, uh, I thought it was not going to be a problem because it was kind of just rocks around like this. I want to just put the cars straight, so I just you know bring the rocks forward, make the rocks straight, and put the cars like this. And you know I thought it's not going to be a well, problem, but well, now I see it's a problem, but. You can bring this to the Board of Appeals and ask for an amendment on your permit, your special permit. Yeah, uh, I'm working with the engineer to put another plot and see if we can change a little bit. You know, I am there, I see we have a lot more spots and, but I'm going to, you know, put it with the engineer another plant and see if you guys can approve for me. Yes. But I, w I cleaned the place, I have pictures here, see if you guys want to look so at it. So we're, um, we're basically um, maintaining the status as long as the continues to work with Bob to, and uh, to... Yeah, I have a picture for you guys. Here, that, sure. know, the way it looks right now. I've already been buying it. Thank you. So, so where should the island be, Bob? These rocks was just like a little bit around here, so mm -hmm. I make all straight so I can put the cars. So the yeah. cars, you know, more attractive for the customer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So instead of a curve, instead of a curbs rock wall, it's a straight. This is the plan that was approved by the zoning board. Yeah. And you can see this, the island. Yeah, there. Right. So, so part of this didn't actually exist because it's in the layout. You just park cars. Was it's it still, like just that? It's still out here. Uh, if I were to identify. Oh, this was all there. Yeah, this is what was there at the time the survey was done. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have any issues with the, 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 the road layout. Um, I think he's got to move this back, but I'll help right. him with that. Yeah. I think that he's we ought to reestablish with just a planting area there, here. and I'll be fine yeah. with it. An and if he wants to make any other major changes, then he's going to have to go to the zone. So you think if he just gets something? Yeah, maybe just eight foot deep. Um, and I'll help him with it. The issue here was we had cars displayed over here. Yeah. He's cleaned all that up. Yeah, and that's all gone. Clean. And I went by there today, and this is fine. The the last time I ever car put it there in the corner of the sale. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I don't have any issues with it there, provided it's approved, but it's right. not approved location. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, um, yeah, we'll put a plan for. Well, I, I, I've seen the plan. Was there grass there at one time? Yeah. There's a little there's a drainage ditch there, like a yeah. culvert. Mm -hmm. 
can you restore the graphs there? Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure you guys So this is yeah. the and curved spot that you were yep. just talking this about? Is, this is the island area that he needs okay. to do some planning. Right, yeah. Okay. I went by that. I saw you remove the cars. Okay. I saw that. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. right. makes sense. So we don't need to take any action there, are we? No, as I think Bob should as long as he works with deal it. with it. Work with Just it. remember, if you get relief from the Board of Appeals, you do need to come back and apply Before to amend you your license to have more cars. Yeah, I'm going to work <coughs> with uh, the man of the day and then you. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey, we've set the April meeting dates. Uh, for the second the 23rd yep. old business board of selectmen handbook we have in our package the board of selectmen handbook it's labeled draft because we haven't actually voted it but it's with, All right, good evening guys it's gone under some revision and uh here it is would someone like to vote to accept it what hey, you know, next week we'll oh look at it earlier. fine that's good we'll um look at it next week put it on we'll kick it down the road <laughs> okay. Uh, sec second, discuss request of W. The Whitman Baseball and Softball Association to change route of opening day parade scheduled on April 20th, 2019. The, the uh, B WBSA had planned yeah. their kickoff on April 20th. It just happens to coincide with the Easter celebration. It's Holy Saturday. And the church would prefer they not have a hundred and mm -hmm. some odd cars and Mm -hmm. bunch of people running around during uh, that uh, day. So I suggested to Brian that he might want to move the kickoff mm -hmm. to Memorial Field. Mm -hmm. um, Scott, has Brian contacted you? Not, Not yet. Either. So um, I believe the request is going to be to authorize the gathering and parade from Memorial Field. I suggested a couple of routes and that he talked with the police chief okay. to identify them. Okay. Anyone have any thoughts? No, this is fine. Okay. We need to go into executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non union personnel. So moved. Second. Yes. 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 Okay, we'll come back in open session only to adjourn. Thank you.